Hello High Levelers, Rayo Daniel here. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, what we're going to do is cover a new feature that has just been released by the Go High Level platform, and that is the new image slider element that's available in the funnels and the websites. Now, you're probably pretty familiar with image sliders if you've ever done website creation. It's been pretty much available always on the WordPress platform, but never inside of the Go High Level platform. And that's always been a requested feature, but up until now has not been available. So let's hop into it so I can give you some of the pros and cons of this new element and how you can utilize it in your funnels and websites. Here we're going to be looking at the MacBook training feature. Feature. We're going to go ahead and open this guy up and just get into the editor. Now, one of the things we're going to notice over here, uh, let me hop into it here. We're going to add an element real quick. We're going to come over here to the side and notice over here, I'm going to blow this up. We've got this new image element here under media, the image slider. All these other ones have been here, but now we have this new image slider element that we can choose from. So we're going to go ahead and add that and we don't want it here at the bottom. So we're going to use this arrow and push it up and make it go up to the top. Now over here on the right hand side, I want to go over a few of the features um, and the, the configuration options. Notice the slides right here by default, it has three slides built into it. We're actually going to be using four. So I wanted to show you just simply click add slide and it adds another one right here. So right now, once you click on the slide, you need to come down to the slide item here. I'm going to blow this up a bit here so we can kind of see it. <clears throat> and as a matter of fact, let me move over a little bit here so we could see this. So right now, here's the image and this image pulls from the media library. And then you even have a CTA, a, a call to action on this one here, call to action link. What do you want to do if somebody clicks on that particular image? Do you want to send them somewhere? Uh, we're not going to do anything in that particular video, but if you wanted to, you could have each particular image have its own link that gets linked out to someplace and you would set that URL here. You would simply say, do you want to use current tab or open in a new tab? So this is how we're going to set this up. And I'm going to blow this back up just so we have room in here, but I'm going to click on the button for slide one. I've already updated. I've got some images here from, I'm going to add a MacBook image one. Notice that we get the image. Now I do want to notice here, because we have four slides, I want you to notice here in the middle, we have this white image here, these four little dots. These dots represent, and I'm going to show you how to configure that, represent the number of images and the rotation that they're going to go through here in the slider. So here we just simply click on the slide two. We pop this up, go pick out a particular image. We're going to select MacBook slide two. Slide three, as you see, this is pretty straightforward. You can get this configured if you have their images up. You can get it configured fairly quickly. And then finally slide four. So come back into our map, MacBooks and we're gonna do slide four. So here we have all of our slides. Now, <clears throat> how do we configure this screen itself? Now, if we take a look here, if we scroll down a little bit, notice that we have a size and I'm gonna blow this up. So right now by default, it pops up at 500, but let's just say we don't wanna do that. We wanna make it a little bit smaller. We just wanna use 350 pixels. So because of that, if we scroll back out, we now know that it's more widescreen across the top. So it's not so fat and it, you can see, uh, it doesn't take up as much space at the top. So you can actually adjust the size of that right here. Now, some of the other common features that you've always been able to edit on sliders and the WordPress uh, platform or being able to customize <clears throat> the rotation, how quickly the images go and some of the bullet points from the, uh, the slider, some of the arrow images. So we're gonna take a look at all of that here. So right now, if we take a slide animation, we see that we have slide and we have change every five seconds. So before I do this, I want to save this. And then I'm going to click on preview just to kind of show you what this looks like. Now there will be a pause right here. So I'm going to continue to talk, but you're going to see that this thing is going to stay here for five seconds and then it's going to switch to the next image. And then after that, it's going to take five seconds. Now notice five seconds seems to be a long time when you're just sitting here looking at the website. So you might want the images to move faster than that or to go faster than that. So what we can do, I'm going to leave this preview up so we can always just refresh it. And we come over here and we just change it to three seconds. So three seconds and you could choose right here um, whether or not you want an infinite loop, meaning do you want, if you don't want an infinite loop, it's just going to scroll through the four images once and that's going to be it. Obviously people keep it on an infinite loop, so it just continues to rotate, rotate, and rotate. Now here's one of the things that you do need to uh, configure is pause on ho hover, meaning <clears throat> if somebody is actually looking at the images and they put the mouse on top of the image, then the image slider will actually stop and allow you to read or look at that particular image before it continues to move on. So it's a way of sort of pausing the slider and letting people look at the image. And you could turn that on and off if you like. Also notice here on the side, if we take a look at this little white arrow right here, there's also an arrow on the other side. This allows you to move left or right to kind of scroll manually between the images in case you want to go back one. If you wanted to, you can come over here and just simply select this option. It says hide arrow and you notice that the arrows are gone if you don't want people to do that, but um, that is an option for you as well. So right now we're going to set that to three seconds. We're going to save that and wait till it saves and then we're going to come back and refresh. And then here, what we're going to do is notice that now the sliders are going to move a little bit quicker um, from the first one to the second one on the image. So I know if we put this pause over here, um, and then of course, if we click on this uh, image here, oh, looks like we need to refresh this again. So here we go, <clears throat> just getting the page loaded. And now that we see that the images are rotating back and forth, it's a little bit faster on the image and notice how the dot changes for whatever position is on there. Now, <clears throat> notice that the white dot 
how the white dot sh shows and sometimes doesn't show on there, that can be a little bit confusing, just like uh, the colors of the dots, because depending on your images, that dot may disappear and may not look as good. So well, I'm going to show you how to get that and configure that particular dot color. But again, remember, if you can always click on this to move left or right, if you hover over it and keep your mouse on it, <clears throat> it will not uh, move. The image will stay here so somebody can continue to look at it. And that's that pause on hover feature that we looked at earlier. Now over here, if we um, scroll up a little bit here, we see the side arrows. I'm going to blow this up just so we can see a little bit better. So if we wanted to change the arrow colors, we could change the arrow colors to something else. And if we even wanted to uh, do some animate or you know glow, we can do that as well. Just to make it fun, we're going to go ahead and push glow. And we're going to change this. Let's just see. I don't know a hex color. Let's just say navy blue hex color since I don't know what that is off the top of my head. So I'm just going to steal this real quick and then pop back over here. And then we can simply change this to royal blue. Pop it up. Sorry. Change it here to royal blue. So now if we do this, notice that the arrow changes colors. That may make it stand out a little bit more. Now that's how you would change the arrow color. Notice on the pagination, that's these little three arrows that we see here. How right now you can't see the black ones because the black ones are on top of this black keyboard. So right now you might want to change that color. So right now what we're going to do, <clears throat> we're just going to change that and see what it looks like in the same navy blue color that we've got here. So that's going to be the active color. And then the inactive color, you know, this is one that we could simply say, well, let's just make it red. So that way they'll stand out a little bit more. And then if we look at it, notice now that these dots, at least the red ones, stand out a little bit more. The blue one, not so much. So we might want to change that one to a different, you know, some somewhat of a green color or something like that, just to kind of stand out. Oh, let's make it a little bit brighter green like that. We come back over here and now it's like little Christmas colors. So we can see how those little dots stand out. You might want to adjust that just in case, you know, your images, <clears throat> those pagination devices may get hidden. Now, <clears throat> Here on the styles, if you click on this, you can actually change the way this looks. Notice that we, instead of a circle, we come over here and now they're square. If we don't want them to be there, we could just choose this image and it just becomes dashes. So you can you get a little customization over how you want the size to go. And then you can adjust just simply the size here. Do you want to make them smaller? You can make them smaller or do you want to go up and make them bigger? Notice if you here, you make them bigger. So here we can just simply adjust them and just sort of sort of see them in the fly, but we're going to leave it at 10 and that's what they currently are. So that right there is how you can do it. And if you wanted to, you can actually add shadow colors to the box and stuff like that. But ultimately, this is it. This is the long-awaited slider. It has many different functionalities. And it now opens up website design and funnel designs to being able to include a lot more different things so that if you do sell... Uh, right now, this is a, a course over like MacBook training, but let's just assume this was a digital course and you were actually having different images for your sales banners for things that you would upsell or different add-ons or things like that that you could sell. You could rotate people through as they're checking out and they can click on the image and go buy it if that's something that they want. So that's awesome. That's all I had over here. If you found the video useful, please help me out and click the like and subscribe button on this. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please click subscribe. I'm here for you to help you and educate you about the Go High Level platform. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a great day. Hey, if you're interested in learning more about High Level, click on the link below regarding my free High Level course. It goes over everything that you need to do to get your account created, get it set up and get it going in about two days. I also, if you sign up with High Level with me, I do offer a snapshot as well as a client onboarding course that can be used by your client or even used to train your own team to do client onboarding. I want to thank you so much again and have a great day.